Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Today's video, we're gonna do 24 fragrances that I cannot live without in 2024. These are my top 24 fragrances in my collection at the moment, my current favorites. And it was difficult to choose because if you've been watching my channel, you know that I have been curating a collection of pure loves. So I have around 160-ish, somewhere in there, perfumes in my collection right now after all the declutters I've done, and I have been curating my perfect collection. I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm pretty close, and yeah, so these are the best of the best. These are my top current favorites out of all of the loves that I have in my collection. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. Thank you so much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I really appreciate you being here, and to my returning subscribers, thank you guys so, so much for all your continued support. I truly appreciate you. Without further ado, let's get into this video. Okay, so if you don't see a perfume in here that I rave about, that I talk about, that I tell you that I love, it's not because I don't love it, it's just because I had to pick the top 24 at the current moment. These are all perfumes that I wear and that I love and that I'm currently just, they have me in a chokehold. So I'm not gonna go into too much detail about each of these fragrances because there's 24 to talk about, but we will try to go through them rather quickly, hopefully. <laughs> Who knows, I can't guarantee that, okay? I like to talk about perfumes. All right, we're gonna start off with the most obvious one in my collection, the one that I talk about all the time. This is by Killian and this is Angel Share. It's my absolute favorite. Nothing says coming home for the holidays like this one. Now this is not my most wearable perfume in my collection, but it is my favorite. It's very boozy, very apple pie, lots and lots of cinnamon, and then there's a lot of oak in the base, which I, I do really pick up on and I'm really thankful for because without it, it would be too sweet. This is still a very, very sweet fragrance. You have to be into boozy, cinnamon, sweet fragrances, but for me, the oak really saves it and balances the fragrance out and I think it's absolute perfection. This is so joyful, so festive, it makes me so happy and I really only wear it in November, December. This is my Thanksgiving scent, this will be my Christmas scent and I'll probably sneak wears of it in January and February here and there but by the time March comes around, here in South Carolina, it gets warm in March and then it's over. I can't wear it anymore. So not my most wearable, but it is definitely my favorite. So that is Killian's Angel Share. Up next, we have one that I discovered in 2023. It's been out for a while, but I was hesitant on trying this one because it has a note of Earl Grey tea and I didn't know how I'd feel about it, but turns out I love it. This is by The House of Kerosene and this is Unknown Pleasures. This perfume is my favorite lemony gourmand in my collection. It has tons of lemon in the opening and then has a lot of caramel, like thick, dense, dripping sweet caramel. And then it has some vanilla. It is absolutely sweet and gorgeous and delicious and very like foodie gourmandish. But the thing that saves it for me is the Earl Grey tea, which I thought I wouldn't like, but it actually turns out I need it in this perfume because without it, it would be way, way, way too sweet. I think there might be honey in here or something like that too. I don't know, I'll put the notes up on the screen somewhere. This is absolutely fantastic in performance. It lasts and the lemony part of the perfume actually lasts through the entire wear on me, which is what I really love because sometimes I don't find that to be the case with like lemon gourmand perfumes but this sticks around, it definitely projects, and that Earl Grey tea tones it down and cuts through some of the sweetness so that it's not sickening sweet to me. But you definitely have to be into gourmands to enjoy this one, I absolutely love it. So that is by The House of Kerosene Unknown Pleasures. Another one that has been around for a long time, but I just purchased this, and every time I wear it, I love it more and more and more. And this is by Bond Number no. 9, and this is Greenwich Village. Like I said, this has been out for a while. People raved about this a while ago when it came out, and then, you know, I still hear people talking about it here and there, but it's definitely not talked about as much as it was. This was super hyped up, but I never tried it because people said that it smelled like Baccarat Rouge 540, which I'm not the biggest fan of. I don't hate it, but I don't love it. When I smelled this in store, I smelled this at Saks Fifth Avenue, I was like, okay, I kind of get what people mean about that BR540 feel. It's very Ambroxan, airy kind of feel to it, but I get completely different. Like this is a lot fresher, a lot fruitier. This has lychee, this has water lily, 
and it is absolutely gorgeous. This has amazing performance on me, and this is a compliment getter. My husband loves this one on me. He absolutely adores it. There's a lot of differences between this one and BR540 in my opinion, and I definitely l prefer this one for sure. I really love this one, amazing performance, and I'm so mad that I waited so long to try this. You know, when I when you hear these things, I mean, it's good to hear different people's points of view, but it's always important for you to just try fragrances for yourself because you might have a completely different experience than someone else. I'm really glad that I found this one. My husband does hate the bottle, though. He does not like these bottles. What do you think of these bottles? I want to know in the comment section. Are you a fan of Bond Number no. Nine's bottles or not? I actually like these. I actually like this bottle, but some people don't. My husband thinks it's really, really tacky. <laughs> And I think that's hilarious because this is an expensive fragrance, but anyway, he loves how it smells and that's what matters. So this is by Bond Number no. 9 Greenwich Village. Okay, this is a brand new one to my collection, but it quickly rose to the top. I love this perfume, you guys. This is so good. I am so glad I found this fragrance. This is by Hez Parfums, and this is Banana Bread Banshee. I went on Hez's website and I was looking at the different, I think they have they're a newer house. I think they were established in like 2022 and they have, I think around like nine ish fragrances at the moment, but the names of their perfumes are so awesome. They're so much fun. I love them. So they're based out of New Orleans and they base their perfumes off of that area. Anyway, this is Banana Bread Banshee and to me this smells like banana bread with lots of walnuts, which is funny because when I looked at the notes, there's no nutty notes in here. I was expecting to see walnut because I get walnuts big time but there are no walnuts listed in here so I'm not sure what's causing that but I get lots of walnuts and lots of banana bread and it is delicious. It has really, really good performance and I absolutely love it. You ha you do have to be into foodie gourmands because to me this smells pretty realistic. I love this so, so much. I love that there's something in here that kind of smells bready and nutty so that it's not overly sweet. You know, it, it does tone the sweetness down but this is still a very sweet perfume, very foodie to my nose but it is freaking amazing and it's affordable too. You get a 50 mil for $70, which that's pretty good in my opinion. For what you get, the quality of this perfume is really good. Like I said, the performance is amazing. So I would pay more, I would have paid more for this. So 70 bucks, in my opinion, is a good deal. So I'm excited to try more from this house. So this is Hez Parfums Banana Bread Banshee. All right, this one has been in my top 10 for life for a while now, and I don't see it going anywhere. This is by Zerzhoff. This is Dama Bianca. I love this. This is one of my favorite spring and summer fragrances. I can't wait until the cold weather is just gone. I absolutely hate cold weather. This is the time of year. I mean, I love December because I love Christmas, but when Christmas is over and then it's just January and February and it's gloomy and cold and wintry, I ugh, it's my least favorite time of the year. And I always look forward to when the flowers start to bloom and the weather starts to get warmer so that I can start wearing Dama Bianca. This is a purple floral. I love this. I haven't smelled this in a while because, you know, I haven't really been wearing it for cold weather. This is so beautiful. I love the kumquat and the lime in the opening. I don't really, I've never had kumquat before, but it smells so good in here. Kumquat and lime in the opening. There's some purple florals in here, and then there's a lot of this like delicate powdery vanilla. There's some woody notes in the base as well. It is just the most feminine, delicate, beautiful, elegant, delicious perfume. I love it so, so much. And every time I smell it, it just, it, it makes me happy. It just lights me up and makes me happy and makes me really look forward to spring. The performance is not amazing. It's not super, super loud, but if I overspray this, then I do get pretty decent performance. It's kind of quiet. It sits closer to the skin, but this does last though. It lasts a decent amount of time. It's just not a loud projecting perfume, which is okay. I don't think it was meant to be. It's more of a delicate perfume and it's just, it's beautiful. This is my second bottle of Dama Bianca. I went through a 30 mil and then I had to get the 100 mil because this is a lifer fragrance for me. So that is by Zerzhoff Dalma Bianca. A perfume that has risen up 
pretty quickly. I had a decant of this and I didn't want to buy it because I thought the performance was not good. But ever since I got the bottle, this perfume has risen to be one of my top favorite fragrances of all time. This is by the House of BDK Rouge Smoking. This perfume is getting better as it sits. The performance is getting better. It's still not amazing, but it's better and I can smell it on me and I just enjoy wearing it so, so much. This has spicy pink pepper and then it has a lot of cherry. It has some heliotrope in it, so it's a little bit powdery. And then there's lots and lots of tonka bean and vanilla in the base, which there's something in here that kind of gives me this not super realistic Coca-Cola vibe, like not straight up Coca-Cola. It's not, don't think Mancera's Tonka-Cola. Is that what it's called, Tonka-Cola? Yes. <laughs> don't think Mancera's Tonka-Cola. That has a very realistic fizzy Coca-Cola note. It reminds me of a spicy cherry Coca-Cola with lots and lots of Tonka bean but not realistic, not photorealistic. Hopefully that makes sense. It smells so good. It's sexy, but playful sexy. Yeah, I love this perfume. This is so good. I just love it so, so much. And every time I wear it, I just enjoy it thoroughly enjoy it. So yes, this is definitely one of my favorites in my collection. This is by the House of BDK Rouge Smoking. A new release of 2023 by the House of Oud is Bon Bon Pop. This got so much hype and for good reason. This is freaking amazing. I think this is worth every bit of hype and then some. But I think some people were thinking that this was like a full-on foodie gourmand or like more gourmand than what it actually is. This fragrance actually is a semi-gourmand. It has a lot of patchouli and a lot of woody notes. So if you don't like those notes, I've, all, I've been warning you guys since I got this, if you don't like patchouli and you don't like woody notes, I don't think you're gonna like this. This has the most realistic peach note in it though. It's very juicy, realistic peach. It's not candied, sweet, synthetic peach. It's sweet, but it's not synthetic candied peach. I have really been struggling with that lately, but this is a gorgeous, gorgeous peach. There's brown sugar, there's coconut. So yes, there are gourmand notes in here. There's vanilla. It's delicious, but the patchouli is noticeable. Although this is the patchouli I love. I love patchouli. As long as it doesn't smell too earthy or too dirty to me, this is a gorgeous, gorgeous fragrance and this is a really good performing fragrance on me it has the most stunning scent trail and i get compliments on this almost every time i wear it I, somebody said something about this perfume it's just really unique and delicious it's not safe though it's not a safe blind buy you definitely have to try this for yourself even though i'm sitting here raving about it try it for yourself because it's just not going to be for everyone but i love it and I think this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. I also really love these bottles. These are hand dipped, so nobody really has the same one, which I really think is pretty cool. Very unique and very artistic. So 10 out of 10 in my book. This is by the House of Oud Bon Bon Pop. All right, let's get this one out of the way too, because I talk about this one all the time, but I adore this fragrance. This is by Argos. This is Triumph of Bacchus. This is my favorite from the House of Argos and I adore it. I think it smells absolutely incredible. I love the combination of rum, green apple, and lots and lots of tobacco. There's also lots of tonka bean. There's lots of vanilla and some patchouli in here as well. This has every note that I love. There's lots of saffron in here. This perfume makes my eyes roll in the back of my head. I am a huge tobacco fan, but I don't like smoky fragrances. I'm very picky about tobacco. They have to, It has to be a tobacco that smells unlit for me to like it. I really, really don't like smoky notes. I don't get anything smoky in here. And that green apple and the rum combo is absolutely divine to me. However, do not blind buy this, okay? This isn't gonna be for everyone. Do not blind buy from the House of Argos. I've told you guys this before, but I think I really need to stress this. If you go to Argos' website, you can get samples. Please get samples because this is a very artistic house. They're fragrances are more complex. Maybe you're not a big tobacco fan. Maybe you won't like the level of booziness that's in here because there is a lot of rum in here. You know, it's just not safe. So none of them are safe. They're all very artistic, very complex fragrances that can be widely interpreted. The more notes you have in a fragrance, the more interpreted it could be. So I highly recommend that you test these first, but 
I personally adore Triumph of Bacchus. I think it's my, it is my favorite tobacco scent of all time. I absolutely love it. And the performance is outstanding. And I love their bottles. Their bottles are very artistic and I really appreciate that. So to me, this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. Honestly, the House of Argos is a 10 out of 10 house for me. I just, I mean, I don't love everything that they come out with, but I love most of what they come out with. So this is Triumph of Bacchus by the House of Argos. Guys, I have three perfumes here on this list from Parfum Smarly. I didn't realize that until now, but Let's go over those real quick. So of course, no one's gonna be surprised about this one. This is Herod. This is the fragrance that, this will always hold a special place in my heart, I think, because this is the first perfume that showed me that I do not just like feminine, super feminine scents. I was scared of the men's line of from this house. I, I was scared of anything that was like unisex unisex leaning masculine or marketed towards men or any of that stuff I just kind of like didn't pay attention to that because I assumed I was more of a feminine leaning person which I am I do usually prefer my fragrances to lean more feminine however when I smelled this one in store I couldn't believe it I mean I couldn't believe it it was my first real wow I need to be more open-minded about unisex fragrances moment that I had and it kind of changed everything for me. It opened the door to more fragrances for me, and I haven't looked back. This perfume smells different on me than it does my husband. Both my husband and I wear this, and when he wears it, he gets more of a smoky tobacco. He gets the black pepper and the cinnamon, and there's labdanum in here, which on his skin translates to more of like a leathery feel. And yeah, the tobacco feels a little bit more smoky on him, and it definitely leans masculine on my husband, but when I wear it, on me, it smells, uh, I don't get any black pepper, I just get a lot of cinnamon, I get a lot of tobacco, but it smells like it's unlit tobacco, it's not smoky, and I get a lot of vanilla in the dry down. And I don't know how that, I mean, skin chemistry, that's what it is, it's skin chemistry. My skin chemistry is completely different than his, and this perfume almost smells like a different perfume on us. It's actually really fascinating, and I love that, but yeah, Definitely try this one first. Try it on your skin and see how you feel about it. But to me, this fragrance doesn't lean masculine. But I could see how some people, if it smells like how it smells on my husband, then yes, it's a perfume that's going to lean masculine. So it's just going to depend on your skin chemistry. But I adore this fragrance. I do wish the performance was a little bit better, but I overspray it and I'm okay. And I love smelling this on my husband. It is so sexy on him. Oh, he's been... I wonder where this is at. He's been really, <laughs> I think he's been sneaking lots of where's this because this feels lighter than what I remember. But anyway, yeah, this is one of my husband's favorites. He sneaks this one all the time and I love it too. So that is by Parfums de Marly, Herod. And then we have by Parfums de Marly, Delina Exclusive. This is such a gorgeous, elegant, sophisticated, beautiful fragrance. The first word that comes to mind when I smell this is elegant. This is lychee, lots and lots of rose. There's some incense, there's some oud. I don't pick up a ton of the incense and oud in here. I just pick up something that makes it smell a little deeper, a little darker. And then I get lots and lots of creamy, creamy vanilla in the base. But on my skin, that vanilla does kind of start to turn powdery when it dries down on my skin and I love it. It is so feminine and it is beautiful. I love that combination of that sweet lychee and rose together. Oh, this is so, so good. This is one of my first niche perfumes I ever purchased and I was just blown away. I mean, I remember smelling this and just being like, wow, I didn't even know perfumes like this existed. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just so amazing to me at the time and it really hasn't changed. Every time I smell it, I kind of feel the same way. So I just don't ever get sick of this. And I've been wearing this perfume more because I used to not wear it just because to me it felt so special and I felt like I needed a special occasion to wear it, but I've been wearing it more lately because life is short, right? Life is short and I love it. So I just think this is amazing. I think we all know that the performance is beast mode on this. This is definitely a screamer. I have oversprayed and choked myself and everybody else out. So I don't overspray anymore, but yeah, definitely a good performance for sure. So that is by Parfums de Marly, Delina Exclusive. And then we have by the same house, Oriana. I adore this fragrance, you guys. And I was scared to get this because when this first released, people were saying this was really poor performing. People were saying they could barely smell it. 
I don't have that experience with this fragrance. I have no issues with this, especially the longer it sits. And I wear this one a lot. And I've gotten compliments on this one, so I know other people can smell me, and I can smell it on me pretty much all day. No, it's not like Delina Exclusive where it fills up a room, but I don't have issues with the performance of this at all. And I think it smells absolutely amazing. I'm a huge fan of orange blossom. I love all the fruity notes that, that are in here. I get this like orange and then orange blossom. Lots of fruity notes. There's raspberry in here, I believe. What I love the most though is the marshmallow. The marshmallow and that whipped cream or chantilly cream or whatever kind of cream is in here, it feels creamy, marshmallowy goodness with lots and lots of fruity notes and this gets me excited for spring too. This is just such a fun like spring fragrance for me. I could see someone wearing this all year round though because it is sweet and it has that marshmallowy goodness. So I could see someone wearing it even right now. I kind of want to wear this right now. I'm craving this. I love this perfume. This is so feminine and marshmallowy goodness to me. There is something in here. I think it's the musk in here. There's something that kind of has this tiny bit of like a clean feel to it, like a clean musk feel, which I actually kind of think is kind of fun and I really like it. Yeah, so usually I don't like the combination of like clean notes with gourmandish, marshmallowy or fruity notes, but somehow it just works in here for me. Yeah, it's one of my all time favorites and probably one of my most worn fragrances. I reach for this one a lot. I haven't lately, but during like spring and summer, I reach for this one a ton. So this is by Parfums de Marly Oriana. Up next we have by the House of Guerlain. This is Spiritus Dubla Veni, and this is absolutely one of my all time favorites. This is, well, Okay, so I told you guys I was getting Angelique Noir, and my husband gave it to me already for Christmas. It has, it's not even Christmas yet, but he, he already gave it to me. <laughs> and that is giving this one a run for its money, but it's too soon. I just got it, so I didn't want to put it in this video because it's too soon. This is absolutely, I still think I slightly prefer this one, but anyway, this is such an amazing vanilla amazing vanilla perfume. I absolutely adore it. This is a very boozy, woody, ambery vanilla scent. I get a lot of the rum in here. I get a lot of the woodiness. I think there's some incense in here. I don't pick up much of that. I never really have. I know some people do. Some people get like a smokiness to this fragrance, but I don't. I Like I've told you guys before, I don't like smoky. This just makes my heart so happy. And I've told you guys before, but if, in case you don't know, I have a granddaughter, she's six years old, and she helps me to pick out these bottles. So you can custom make these bottles, you can get what you want on the top, you can get the color of the cord, you get the color of the seal, and then you can decide how you want your name or what you want engraved in the back and what color you want it. You can get plain, silver, or gold. And so she picked this out. She also picked out my Angelique Noir as well, and she did an amazing job. She did an amazing job on both of them, but whoa, she's six years old and I swear that kid has more style than I ever will. <laughs> she made it match and everything. I mean, it, it it looks amazing. I also have a grandson too. His name is Xavier. He doesn't help me pick up my perfume bottles because I don't think he'd be interested in that. But my six-year-old granddaughter, she's into perfumes already and she absolutely loves helping me pick these out. So these bottles are super special to me. I'll always have this in my collection and this perfume means the world to me and I but besides that I love the way that it smells as this perfume has sat like I said I've had it about a year now as this perfume has sat the performance has gotten better so that's kind of how it goes with vanillas vanillas do seem to get stronger with time it's still I don't think this is ever going to be a screamer but I can definitely smell this on me and I enjoy it so much but if you like a boozy yummy ambery, formal, sophisticated vanilla with some woody notes. Definitely check this out. Yes, it's expensive, but I don't care because I love it. So that is by the House of Guerlain, Spiritus Dubla Vini. I do have another one by Zerjoff. This is Italica, which I don't think anybody's surprised. I know that I talk about this one a lot. This is definitely a beautiful cold weather scent. I have to wear this in the cold weather because it is very sweet. It's got a delicious lactonic milky note. It has, which you do have to be a fan of that. You have to be a fan of milky notes. You have to like lactonic notes, which not everybody does. It has a very noticeable saffron note in here. Lots and lots of almond that kind of smell like cherry to me. And then the toffee comes through. It gets really, really rich and beautiful. There's toffee. I love toffee. And it gets really sweet. And then I get this 
in the dry down I get a cookie feel it smells like a cookie to me like an almond toffee cookie and I get a lot of that lactonic in the dry down so it's like I'm eating a really yummy almond toffee cookie with a glass of milk and I freaking love it it is one of the most enjoyable perfumes but this is very polarizing and some people hate this perfume so try before you buy I get really good performance out of this I have no issues and I love it. It will probably always be one of my top 10 or really close in my collection. So that is by Zerzhoff Italica. Speaking of cookies, this is another one that had tons of hype in 2023, but for me it was worth every single bit of the hype. I've talked about this one a ton. No one's going to be surprised that this is here. This is by Giardini di Toscana and this is Bianco Latte. What a beautiful, sweet, really good performing fragrance. This one is widely interpreted. There's lots of different things people think this smells like. Some people get latte, some people get electronic vibes, some people feel like it smells very cinnamon heavy. There's no cinnamon in here, there's coumarin in here, and I think coumarin is just a note that gets widely interpreted. Some people pick up different things. So what I get from this is I get the honey for sure, I definitely get the vanilla, I definitely get the caramel. This is to me a honey caramel vanilla cookie baking in the oven with some cinnamon sprinkled on top. That's what it smells like to me. This is my most complimented perfume ever. I was blown away and I think it's because the performance is so good. I mean this is a very very noticeable fragrance. If you wear this people are going to be able to smell this and it smells so delicious to so many people that people are going to say something. I've heard a couple of people say that this smells like a candle so you should test this. Test this for yourself. You know, people are getting different things, but to me, it is amazing and smells like a cookie. This is by Giardini di Toscana Bianco Latte. Up next we have by Initio. This is Psychedelic Love. I honestly do not know what it is about this fragrance that I love so much. I think it's the sandalwood and the myrrh. This is a gorgeous myrrh and sandalwood fragrance. The sandalwood is so smooth and creamy, but honestly, everything in this perfume is blended so well that I had a hard time knowing what notes were even in here. I just remember spraying it and being like, what is this magic? But I did have to look at what the notes were before I really could understand what I was smelling. Sometimes I get a perfume and I smell it and I'm like, oh, this has this, this, and this in it. But I had to look at the notes first before I could figure it out. It's just blended so well. Definitely makes sense that there's myrrh and sandalwood in here for sure. The top, I think it has ylang ylang in here. There's some heliotrope in here as well. So that this is a powdery fragrance as well. But that sandalwood, oh, there's just something about it. It's not overly sweet but it has just enough sweetness in it for my taste. But if you're not into super sweet scents, you could still probably really like this. If you love sandalwood and myrrh, check this out. It's freaking fantastic with amazing performance, but it's not obnoxious. It's not in your face at all. This is the perfect signature set. You could wear this anytime, any place, all year round, and it's going to be okay. It's not going to be too much for hot weather, but it's strong enough to cut through the cold. It is like the perfect signature scent. I love it. So this is by Initio Psychedelic Love. My most worn fragrance of 2023 is by Simone Andreoli Leisure in Paradise. I absolutely adore this fragrance and pretty much lost my mind when I got it. Actually, I tried this first. I had a sample of it. I tried it at the same time I tried Malibu Party in the Bay and when I first sampled it, I loved Malibu Party in the Bay. Still do, which it is a very close like Malibu almost makes the list, but it just doesn't because I, I love this one. This one has surpassed Malibu Party in the Bay, even though I think that fragrance is freaking phenomenal. But this one just gets me. It's pineapple. It's the pineapple in here, you guys. I'm a huge fan of pineapple. Love pineapple in everything. And this has just this realistic, juicy, sweet, delicious pineapple in here that I love. It's also, it's not just pineapple though, it also has papaya and it smells like tropical fruity yumminess. It's coconut, lots and lots of vanilla. And then there's some woodiness in here too, which I pick up slightly, but not a ton. I love this so much. This is one of my favorite perfumes of all time. This is my favorite summertime perfume, I think. I, I just love it. I cannot be without this. I do not want to be without this summer of 2024, absolutely not. And if I go through this, this will be another, I will absolutely purchase another bottle of this immediately 
because I adore it. So that is by Simone Andrioli, Leisure in Paradise. Another summertime fragrance that I think you could actually wear all year round because this is warm enough and vanillic enough that you could probably get away with wearing it right now. This is by Narcotica and this is Narco Oasis. This fragrance was a blind buy. I just took a chance when they released it. I was like, I'm just buying it because it sounded like the tropical vanilla amazing perfume of my dreams and it was. Not as soon as I got it. When I first got it, I've told you guys before, I thought it was gonna be too much passion fruit, but as this has sat and developed, I adore this fragrance so, so much, you guys. Something about those tropical sweet fruity notes, they get me, they just get me. Mixed with vanilla, oh, I'm in, I'm so in. This has the most gorgeous passion fruit note. If you get this perfume and the passion fruit feels like sharp at first, just put it away for a minute. Put it, spray it, put it away. And when I got this, the performance was only moderate, but now it is like pretty strong. I miss this. I wanna wear this. I wanna wear this. I already have a perfume on, but ooh, I wanna wear this. This is passion fruit. I, there's lots of other fruits in here as well. It's not just passion fruit, but I mostly get passion fruit. Lots and lots of other fruits, lots of vanilla. Really amazing fragrance, super solid release. This was my favorite blind buy of 2023. So that is by Narcotica Narco Oasis. And of course, Dulce Diablo is in here by Narcotica as well. This is on my tray right now for December and I have been loving this. I have been loving this. And this has also gotten stronger. This was only moderate performing when I first got it. And I remember being like, this is not a screamer like everybody says it is, but I, boy was I wrong, because yes it is. <laughs> it is definitely a loud and strong performing perfume. It will fill up a room and it is so freaking delicious. If you love boozy fragrances, listen, not if you, love boozy. You must. You must love boozy fragrances to love this because this is rum and cognac and boy is it noticeable. <laughs> I mean, I love it though. I'm a big, big fan of boozy notes. And then that apricot really just is quite delicious. Lots and lots of chocolate. For some reason, the chocolate in here smells like Tootsie Rolls to me. There's a little bit of honey in here, some sugar, some vanilla. I don't get a ton of the honey. I get mostly, mostly what I get is lots of boozy, lots of apricot, and some Tootsie Roll chocolate that smells like Tootsie Rolls. And I don't know what it is about that combo, but I'm freaking obsessed and I love it. This is by Narcotica Dulce Diablo. This perfume is one of my most worn fragrances and even when I don't have it on my tray, I sneak it. I don't really put it on my tray that much because I know that no matter what, regardless if it's on my tray for the month, I'm gonna sneak wares of this because it's just one of my most worn fragrances that I genuinely love. This is by Nobile 1942. This is La Danza. I'll put the full name up on the screen because I can never pronounce it, but this is just one of my favorites. I mean, you can see this is a huge dent for me. I love it. And the thing is, is I almost decluttered this when I first got it. I am so happy I did not declutter this because when I first got this fragrance, I could barely smell it. The performance was so weak. I was so mad because it smells amazing, but I gave it some time and now it's still not like ever gonna be a screamer, but I can definitely smell this on me now. It has definitely gotten stronger with time. So if you get this and it's light, just give it some time. There's red apple in here and that's what I get. I get a very specific red apple smell. When I first got this fragrance, I did not get the cinnamon, but now I do. Definitely, as soon as I spray it, I get cinnamon. I get the coconut, but the coconut smells more like a gourmand-ish coconut, but there is a slight shampoo-y feel to this fragrance as well. So it's not straight up gourmand to my nose. There's a, like a clean, it smells like clean, yummy, delicious shampoo. So I always picture myself like I just washed my hair, my hair smells like delicious shampoo, and I'm eating an apple turnover. <laughs> That's what I picture. I don't know what it is about this fragrance that just is so comfy. I'm a big fan of apple. I love apple notes. It's one of my favorite notes and perfumes. It's so easy to wear. I feel like it's not so strong that I can't wear it in hot weather, but it's also cozy and yummy enough that I can wear it in cold. So this is by Nobile 1942 La Danza. Okay, I have two from the house of Navitus. Navitus has been coming out with a ton of fragrances lately. I did just purchase the new one by Paulina Schar, Lost in a Dream. I'll let you guys know what I think about it when it comes in, but I don't have it yet. It's on its way to me right now. So first up, we have Miel Extase. 
This one is absolutely gorgeous. If you love honey, if you love apricots, if you love chocolate, if you love caramel, if you love gourmands, I love this one so much. The honey in here though is really unique. A lot of times when I smell honey, it's very animalic. Realistic honey, like you're, you walked up and you opened a jar of honey and you're smelling it. That's what a lot of perfumes have, but this is not like that. This is not animalic raw honey, but you can still recognize it as honey. It's really interesting. I really love that. And I love the chocolatey dry down in here as well. I really love apricots. There's a slight booziness, but it's not anywhere near as boozy as Dulce Diablo. Some people compare this to Dulce Diablo, but I pick up so many differences. This has amazing, amazing performance. This is the strongest one that I've tried from Navitas. This definitely is the best performing. No issues, it is definitely loud and will perform very, very well. I love it so much. This is in collaboration with Karina from uh, Dear Makeup Diary and I think she did an amazing, amazing job. So this is by Navitas Parfums Meal Extas. And the other one by Navitas, this is my favorite Navitas out of all of them so far. This is Baklava Royale. You know what's funny is when I did my review of this, I said this was like moderate to good performing. This has definitely gotten stronger. I wore this, I wore this to bed and I sprayed my pajamas with it and I still, can't get it out of my pajamas. Like I've washed it, I think, two or three times now, and it's still in my top, my pajama top. <laughs> Every time I put it on, I'm like, oh, there's Baklava Royale. It sticks to clothes, okay? It is definitely a good performing fragrance at this point. No issues with that whatsoever. I adore this, you guys. The nuttiness in here is just doing it for me. This is nutty, lots of pistachio, lots of almond. There's some honey. There's some vanilla, tonka bean. It's yes, 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 yes. There's also a little bit of amber wood in here, which amber wood is a note that Navitas puts in a lot of their perfumes. If you look at most of the new releases, amber wood is usually listed, which is not going to be for everyone. Not everybody loves amber wood. So if you don't love amber wood, you're going to pick up that similarity in all of the fragrances. I don't know if they're in all of them, but they're in a lot of them. Amber wood is definitely something they like to put in their fragrances. I love amber wood, so it works for me. I love when gourmand notes have something in it to offset the sweetness so that it's not overly sickening sweet, and that's why I really get along with a lot of Navitas gourmand fragrances, and that is in here as well. So if you're not a fan of that amber wood DNA that's in a lot of Navitas fragrances, just be aware that it is in here. Personally, I think that's absolutely brilliant because like I said, it would be way, way, way too sweet without it. This smells like baklava, pistachio baklava. It is so good. It is so good. If you like nutty, sweet, honey, baklava perfumes, just get your nose on this, okay? It is so, so good. So this is in collaboration with Gabby from Gabby Loves Perfumes. This is by Navitas. Baklava Royale. And a very polarizing scent that I talk about a lot is by Nishane Ani. I did recently just get to try Ani X and I liked it, but I didn't like it as much as this one. I feel like Ani X is more toned down. If you find this one to be too much for you, give Ani X a try. It seems to be a little more toned down in the spicy department, but I prefer the OG over Ani X. I'm glad I got to try it, but I definitely am gonna stick with the OG. This is spicy, cardamom, ginger, some green notes, and some citruses in the opening, and then lots of yummy, delicious, beautiful vanilla. Some people think this leans masculine. I do not, I don't, I think it's the cardamom. Some people think that the cardamom makes this smell masculine leaning, but no, I don't. This is so good. This is so good, but man, is this polarizing. Some people love this perfume and some people absolutely despise it. I love it. I love it, love it. It's one of my top favorite fragrances in my collection and I cannot get enough. Plus, this is a compliment getter for me and the performance is super amazing. This is by Nishane Ani. Another one I've been talking about a lot is by Milano Fragranzi Panettone. And this smells like Panettone. That's what it smells like. It smells like bready, yummy, delicious, sweet bread with lots of orange, some raisins, a little tiny touch of a booziness in here, but booziness is not the star of the show for me. And this just smells like a delicious, fruity, 
sweet bread. Panettone is an Italian dessert that they eat around Christmas time, and I have never had it, but if it tastes the way that this smells, I would love to eat it. <laughs> I think I would really enjoy it. I enjoy wearing this for sure. This is pretty decent performance. I don't really have too many issues with it. It lasts for a good portion of the day and it's about moderate performing as far as the projection. This just smells delicious. Do you need to be into foodie gourmands to enjoy this? Absolutely. So this is by Milano Fragranzi Panettone. All right, and last but definitely not least is by Stefan Humbert Luca and this is Venom Incarnate. This perfume is absolutely amazing. I love it. It is so freaking fabulous to my nose. I just, I cannot get enough. And I know you guys know that I love this bottle. I know some people don't because some people hate snakes and they don't want snakes on their bottle, which is fine. But for me, I think this is super artistic and beautiful and I love this perfume. Plus I like snakes. Amazing 10 out of 10, the performance, the bottle and the scent. This has strawberry, wild strawberries in it. I get a lot of the wild strawberries, but you know, this is something you have to test for yourself. This is not, definitely not a safe blind buy. This is expensive. You know, this is only a 50 mil and this is like 200 and something dollars. I don't remember exactly how much it was, but for a 50 mil, I mean, if the performance wasn't so good, I don't need a lot of sprays of this, so I know I won't be going through this quickly. That saves it for me. I'm just justifying it because I love the way it smells. <laughs> but I am really, really happy that the performance is good because I don't feel like I need tons and tons of sprays of this fragrance. I will warn you though that some people think that the strawberry in here smells synthetic. I've heard that from a couple of people. So test this for yourself. I don't get synthetic. I get very realistic wild strawberries in the opening, which I love. There's also some, I think there's some raspberries, some black currant in here as well. So it's not just strawberries. Lots of caramel. I pick up a ton of the caramel and then there is leather in here as well, which I do pick up on. So you do have to be a fan of leather. To me, it's very smooth leather, very easy to wear leather, but still leather nonetheless. There's some cinnamon in here as well, which I really love. Not a ton. It's not overpowering, but I do pick up on it and I love it. So this is by Stefan Humbert Luca Venom Incarnate. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Those are the 24 fragrances I don't want to be without in 2024. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think of all these fragrances. Have you tried them and what is your experience with these perfumes? Again, thank you for watching. If you did like it and you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope you're having an amazing day and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye.